Now let's see the question number four. It's a beautiful question that combines the concept of mensuration and profit loss. Now, if we are familiar with the concepts of these two topics, then definitely this question wouldn't be difficult to solve. Now, let us see what is the data we have at hand. A goldsmith bought a large golden ball at 1 lakh or 10 lakh rupees, melted it to make certain number of solid spherical beads such that the radius of each bead was one-fifth of the radius of the original ball. Now we know, we have seen in multiple questions in mensuration that when a large ball is melted into smaller spherical shaped balls, what remains unchanged is the volume. So let's use that property. Now, for the big ball and the smaller spherical shaped beads. Let me assume the radius of the ball is 5R so that the radius of each of the spherical shaped bead is R. Now, the volume of the ball. Now, volume of a sphere is 4 third pi R cube. which must be equal to the number of beads, let us say, is equal to n into volume of each bead, which is again 4 by 3rd pi r cube. Now, 4 by 3 into pi gets cancelled out easily. And we get 125 r cube is equal to n into r cube thereby the number of small spherical shaped beads we have is 125. Now, with this, the concept of mensuration is done. From here on, we need to apply the concept of profit loss. Now, he says the goldsmith sold all the beads at 20% discount and still was able to make a profit of 20%. Then the listed price of each golden bead in INR was. Now, we need to calculate the listed price, which is the other name for market price. In order to do so, I need to know the discount, selling price, profit, cost price. So let's start with the cost price. Now, the original ball was bought for 10 lakhs. And now, its value is same for 125 small spherical shaped beads. So value or rather I would say cost price of each bead is equal to 10 lakhs divided by 125 which will give you 8000. Now, it seems in the transaction, he got a profit of 20%. So, which means the selling price is equal to 120% of cost price. So, which is 120% of 8,000. Now, that gives you 9,600. But when was it sold for 9,600? After giving a discount of 20%. So if I assume the market price to be M, I have given a 20% discount on that, which means I am selling it for 80%. So 80% of the market price is equal to selling price, which indeed is equal to 9,600. So four by five of the market price is 9,600 which helps us calculate the market price to be equal to 1000. Hence, answer option C. Agreed that the problem will take a bit of time to solve. But if you observe, once you solve this, you will realize that this question is not as difficult as you have thought of it when you read the question. So it all depends on how well you understand the concepts involved. 
clearly separate them and apply one after the other to figure out the right answer. Now let's look at question number five. There's a triangle ABC. D is the midpoint of BC, meaning AD is the median and AM is the altitude. In geometry, half the job is drawing the picture correctly. So let us use the data to draw the figure. There is a triangle ABC. A, B, C. AM is the altitude, which means the perpendicular line drawn from a vertex to the opposite side. D is the midpoint of BC. So AD becomes the median. Now length of AB, BC and CA are in the ratio 2 is to 4 is to 3. Then we are to find the ratio of lengths of BM and AD. Okay. Let us start with BM. Now suppose if I consider the length of AB to be two units, then the length of BC will be four units and then the length of AC will be three units because the sides are in the ratio two is to four is to three. Now, if I consider BM to be X, then the value of MC will be four minus X. Now, since AM is perpendicular to BC, I would take two triangles, triangle AMB and triangle AMC. So in triangle AMB and triangle AMC, applying Pythagoras, I can say AM square is equal to AB square, that is two square minus BM square, which is X square. And in triangle AMC, AM square is equal to the hypotenuse AC square, that is 3C square, minus 4 minus X whole square. So from here, I get 4 minus X square is equal to 9 minus X square plus 8X minus 16. Now minus X square gets cancelled out. So I get 8X is equal to 11, thereby X is equal to 11 by 8. Hence, the value of AM is 11 by 8. I need to find the ratio of lengths of AM, uh, BM and DC. So BM is equal to 11 by 8. So let me calculate the value of AD. Now AD is the median. Do we know of any property that talks about the length of the median? Yes, popularly called as Apollonius theorem. So what does Apollonius theorem say? It says in triangle ABC, sum of squares of two adjacent sides, that is AB square plus AC square is equal to two into square of the median plus square of half the opposite side. Now, since D is the midpoint, either I can take BD or DC. Now we know AB is two. So two square is four, three square is nine, which is equal to two into AD square plus DC is two. So two square is four. So we get AD square is equal to four plus nine, 13 by two, minus four, which is five by two. Hence, AD is equal to square root of five by two. So once we have the length of BM and AD, it's only about finding the ratio. So the ratio will be 11 by eight 
is to 5 by 2. And if we multiply by 8 throughout, we get 11 is to 4 root 10. Hence, answer option A. Again, this is also a question that might take a bit of time. But if you observe closely, all that you need to know to be able to answer this question is the standard or the fundamental concepts of geometry involving altitude and medians. Now let's see question number six. A helicopter flies along the sides of a square field of side length 100 kilometers. So let's say assume this is a square field. The length of each side is 100 kilometers. Now helicopter flies along these four sides. The first side is covered at a speed of 100 kmph. The second side is covered at a speed that is increased by 100 kmph, so which means 200 kmph. The third side is covered with a speed that is 100 more than the previous, so 300 kmph. And the fourth side with a speed of 400 kmph. Now, if you observe closely, you will see that this is a problem of average speed. Now, average speed, by definition, we know is nothing but total distance by total time taken. Now, total distance is four sides of the square, that is 400, by total time taken. We know time is distance by speed. So, the time taken to cover the first side is 100 by 100. Second side, 100 by 200. Third side, 100 by 300. And fourth side is 100 by 400. Now, if 100s are cancelled out throughout, we get 4 by 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4. Now, we know the LCM of all the fractions in the denominator is equal to 12. So it becomes uh, 400 into 12 by 25, 25 ones, 25 sixteens. So 16 into 12, which is equal to 192 kilometer per hour. Answer option B. Again, time, speed, and distance is a topic which most of the students find difficult and time consuming to answer. But if you see this question is one of those straightforward questions based on a very simple concept of average speed. Hence, it's very important that you judge the difficulty level of the question and decide whether to attempt it or not, not by how it looks and not by the topic it belongs to, but actually how difficult the question is.